everyone welcome back to my channel this is a little baby kookaburra painting that I did a while ago and I just really love the technique it's pen and wash and I thought I'd do some baby kookaburras for you today just a little closer look for you lots of fun to do and pen and wash is a really lovely technique everyone back again so I've got my paper ready and I'm just drawing on three baby kookaburras for you and they've got you imagine their head as almost a square or a rectangle I should say with rounded edges and then we pop on the beak. They've got quite large beaks. Now, if you need pictures of baby kookaburras, just go on to Pixabay or any free site where you can get images and just download them. I've done quite a few kookaburras in my time. They're such colourful characters. So remember if you do a raise to use a kneadable eraser. Doesn't damage the paper. I like to just soften back once I've done my drawing, especially this line where I've got the branch going through at the bottom. Okay, so I'm just about ready to some paint on this just giving myself some guidelines just get rid of that line on the beak here and we're pretty much ready to go so I don't mind the pencil lines showing through especially with pen and wash but I don't like them to be too heavy. So you can see that I've drawn myself a tree trunk and it's just a, a similar copy to this one that I showed you earlier. I'm going to approach this video by doing a little bit of the first step and then I will make the video go a little bit quicker for you. So first of all, I'm just using some clear water and I'm popping it onto the bird, not putting it on the beak at the moment or the eye. So we're just going around that area, just plain water. I'm just going to do the one bird at a time because I want the um, paper to stay reasonably wet. Is taking off a bit of the excess water there. The paper I'm using is a Canson. It's 300 GSM and it's a cold pressed. The colour I'm using is a Daniel Smith and it's Moon Glow. So just starting to get some of these feathers in. 
it's very very transparent lots of water in it going under the beak and always painting in the direction that the feathers would be growing I've just got this little palette today um, just to show you that's just moon glow that's in there and I've just added a little bit of water to it well, quite a lot of water actually you're looking for quite a a transparent color just coming down into this area here just going to use a little bit of clear water in a moment just to soften back and we'll just bring a few feathers just across the chest And just bringing out a few just at the side. So any harsh lines, just use a bit of clear water just to soften them. Just like a few stray feathers just on the back of the head here. Okay, so I'm going to speed up while I do the other two birds.
Okay, so now I'm going to do the branch and again putting some water on there. Now I want the branch to be reasonably wet, unlike the kookaburras that I want to just damp. Now the brush I was using to do the feathers on the kookaburras was just a double O. It's a Neef Taclon round. I really love that brush for detail work. The brush I'm using at the moment is just a squirrel and it's called a squirrel mix and it's a number 10 round. And I think it's another Neef can't read it. I'll let you know about that in the notes. Yes, it is a neaf and it's a squirrel mix. Just making sure that's nice and wet. Because I do want the colours to run in this one. And again, I'm just going to use the same mix to start with. Just running it along the top and along the bottom of the branch. Just being very loose. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of a colour called Sodalite Genuine. A bit of a knot in the tree there. So I'm just teasing it along and helping it just run out a little bit. I want it to be quite dark underneath the birds too. Just where this branch is sticking up, I'm just starting to put a bit of shading in there. Just dropping it in just here and there to add a little bit of extra colour. Now Sodalite Genuine just um, granulates so beautifully on its own without a granulating medium. And you can already see those granulations happening. I'm just softening off any harsh lines where the bird's feathers meet the branch. Use a tissue if you need to. Now the next colour I'm going to pick up is another one of my favourite colours and those that follow me would know that I love Quinacridone Gold Deep and it just works beautifully with the Sodalite Genuine. So it's a Daniel Smith and it's Quinacridone deep so we're just adding some of that and just letting it do its own thing so that's called dropping in I'm just touching it with my brush and I'll just Give me some lovely, lovely, interesting branches. So we'll let that just do its thing. In the meantime, I'm just going to use a script liner, a long skinny brush, and some of the Sodalite Genuine that we used earlier, and just pull out some little whiskers from this branch. And I really don't think it needs much more than that. 
couple down here and let's leave it at that now while that branch is working its magic and getting the granulations happening we'll work on the wings of the birds and try not to smudge what's there I'm going to first of all just add some water um, to the wings and we're going to be working wet on wet. Now if you're new to painting I would just do one at a time. I think there's still a little bit of that quinacridone gold in my brush but that's okay. So nice and wet. And Burnt Sienna is our first colour. We're just going to touch that up into the tops of the wings. Just let it run with the water. Then I'm going to pick up some burnt umber just on the dirty brush. So I haven't washed my brush when I say it's a dirty brush. And we're just going to add a little bit of that darker colour down to the bottom section of the wing they'll all just merge in together we'll try and get some little feathers happening on the end of this one These two will just merge in together here, but that's fine. Just pulling back into this bird here a little bit because he's in front, this one's behind. So I'm just trying to just indicate a few little feathers from this bird overlapping. Now, I'll let that just dry off a little bit while I just work on the beaks. I'm going to mix up um, some very, very transparent burnt sienna and that will just make a flesh tone. The bottom of the beaks are a flesh tone. So we get that in. And on this one here too. So we're just going wet on dry now. Because the um, that area is dry, remember? We didn't wet it earlier. Now while we've got the burnt sienna, we will do some work in the eyes just get rid of that that's the trouble when you're working on a wet project sometimes you will make a little mistake but it's always good always good to learn how to remove mistakes so just a little bit of clear water and a blot so with the eyes Again, a little bit of burnt sienna. I want a slightly stronger mix for this. So I'm just getting a little bit more of the pigment and making it just that little bit stronger. A little twist of the brush um, will 
So I've just made a stronger mix. So I'm sorry that was out of camera. So I've just moved it in. A little twist of the brush will bring my brush to a really nice point. And we will try and do these eyes. So the eyes are just a U-shape. It's always exciting when you start on the eyes because they start to come to life. But more life will come into them when I work on them later on. Just putting this colour in while I have it on my brush. Now a little bit of the burnt umber that we used earlier on the brush so I'm just getting a little bit of burnt umber so on the dirty brush a little roll again to bring my brush to a nice point and I'm just going to just add some of that into this top part and again here And here there we go so I'm just washing my brush now and just blotting it on a tissue and just softening off where those two colors meet there we go so while that eye is drying we can do a little bit more work down here um, the quinacridone gold I love that color as I said earlier quinacridone gold deep on my little brush and we're just going to start just to add a little bit more into these wings Just to the top part. See how the colour just lifts, lifts the bird, makes it much more interesting. And I'm also, you notice, I'm roughing up the edges. No sharp edges on the birds. And again, just here. So it's just little dabbing strokes. Now I would like to darken up the bottom a little bit. So I'm just going to take some of that burnt umber again. Remember that's the colour that we used on the wings. And I'm just going to add a tiny little bit of the Sodalite Genuine, which we used earlier. Just to darken it up, just a touch. And we'll just start to just add some lower feathers not too much detail we don't need a lot of detail Little curvy strokes in this section. It's like a little C stroke.
and I think that yeah, looking very cute. I'm going to mix up a little bit more of that colour. So remembering it was burnt umber. And a little bit of sodalite genuine. If you don't have sodalite genuine, just a little bit of paint spray would be fine. So that's the colour. So some water in there gives me a nice transparent mix. Now, first of all, I'm just going to add a little bit of water to these areas here. So I'll do this little bit and then I'll speed it up for you again. So I'm going to do the top of the beaks now. Just putting some clear water on and picking up. This is a mixture of the Payne's Grey along with the Moon Glow. And starting at the bottom and working along to the tip. I want it much darker at the bottom and up near the feathers and keeping it quite light in this area here. Again, just a little bit of water.
just if you need to soften off do Now remember not to put too much water on or the colour will just flood across. You only need enough to help keep the paint nice and soft. It's going to darken up a little bit more towards the bottom. Okay, I'm going to let that dry and I'll come back and finish the wings and do some more work on the eyes. So we're all dry and there's just a few things I need to do before I do the ink work. I need to put a little bit of a turquoise colour on the wings they get a little um, light reflection so I've popped out a little bit of gouache now if you haven't got gouache which is something like this or you could use some some white acrylic any white acrylic would be fine like a titanium white now the color that I'm going to use is thalo turquoise So a little bit of thallow turquoise. Now I want this colour to be quite opaque. That's why I'm using the gouache. Mixing them together, I just want it to be a little bit stronger in colour with the turquoise. So I'm picking up just a little bit more of that fellow turquoise. There we go. And just using the small brush, popping a little bit on, just onto the front of the wings at the top. Little dabby strokes. And some on this one. Then just using a little bit of white on the dirty brush. And just add a few just little lighter ones towards the front. Okay, while we've still got that colour, I'm going to put a little bit on the beak and just dragging a little bit across. A little bit on this one. And 
And let's go back to the eyes now. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the Moonstone. And just darkening up either side of the eye. It's only a tiny little bit. Just in the top, on the outside of the U shape, the iris. And let me think, what are we going to do next? We just need to put this in, so just picking up a little bit of the Sodalite Genuine. And we're just going to start just to... Put a little bit of a, a hole in that log there, in the knot or where the tree has fallen off, the, the branch has fallen off. And just dry brushing. So I've got paint on my brush, but I'm just using the, the side of the brush rather than the, than the point. And just so we're just putting some shadows just in that area there. You could even just put some elsewhere if you want a little bit more texture in the log itself. But we're going to be doing quite a lot of pen work on that area. So the final thing before we finish off is just to do some masking. We're just going to put some tissues over our birds or a piece of paper, something just to cover the kookaburras and then using a round brush and I'm going to use moonstone first I've already got that mixed and just doing a little bit of splattering I don't mind if it goes around the outside edge that's fine even just a little bit above the kookaburras. And I'm also going to do some in that lovely turquoise mix that we made as well, but I'm just adding a bit of water to it. And now we're going to do some pen work. So this is the pen I'm going to use. It's just a gel pen and it's in black. And you could use this or you could use something like a fiber tipped pen. You could even use a biro if you weren't worried about it being archival, if you're just doing a card something like that so with no further ado i'll do a little bit of pen work and then i will speed up the video for you you'll notice i've put a tissue down to rest my hand on so um very handy to have your hand with a tissue underneath it stops any oils from your hand going on the paper so as I said I'll do a little bit and then I will speed up the video for you
So just using a very, very light touch. This is the eye. I believe the eye is probably one of the most important parts. If you don't get an eye right, the whole thing can look terrible. So try and leave yourself a little reflection mark. If you do lose it, there's no big deal. You can always just add it with a white gel pen or a little bit of gouache later on. I have a little dark mark at the back of the wing there. Uh, not the wing, the beak, I should say. Making sure those feathers overlap the branch. Keeping your pen work nice and loose. So I'm going to put on uh, the speed now. Stay right till the end because I've got some final tips for you and I'll share them with you and give you some close-ups at the end of the video.
So I'm just using a white Posca pen and I just like to add a few final highlights just to the eyes in the corners sometimes just a little bit down on that bottom lid Um, if it's needed on the beaks, these are not too bad. Just adding some final little highlights here on the wings. Of course, you could use your gouache for this. Um, just... little bit maybe just on the on the branch just to loosen the whole thing up and I think that there's nothing much more I can do to this one I hope you've enjoyed watching um, just my tips for this one are is keeping your glazes very very transparent it's easier to do that many layers of transparent and building up gradually rather than going too deep straight away in color I find it just easier myself um, use a good quality paper I decided to use the Canson cold pressed because it's not as grainy as the arch is cold pressed and it's much easier to draw on with the pens. I love to use gel pens but I also used to like, love the fibre tip pens. Um, so it's just personal choice really. I just grab a piece of paper, uh, the same paper and just have a doodle and see which you prefer I guess. Um, keep your pen work nice and loose. Try not to um, get too tied up in detail. And just enjoy uh, the freedom of pen and wash because it really is a lovely medium. So from me, it's goodbye. Hope you enjoyed the kookaburras. And I'd love to hear from you if you have a go yourself. You can always email me at i.recycle at yahoo.com or leave a comment be below. If you have any questions, please, please be free to ask them. I always try and reply to comments. So good luck with it and bye for now.